Hey, everybody. Welcome to hour number two of In Wheel Time, the car show. Coming up, we continue our discussion about used and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Mac DeLop at John Eagle Honda joins us. We'll also have our Ram Tracks feature, and we've got the stories making automotive news headlines this week. I think I meant to say the Jeep Trails feature, but whatever. It's one of those. Jeep Trails or Ram Tracks one. I think it's Jeep Trails. Didn't we just? Never mind. Uh, all that and more just ahead, including the confusion. And hour number two of this week's In Wheel Time Car Show. Along with Mike out of this world, Mars, who's got his head buried in the computer down there. And King Conrad DeLong right there in the yellow BG shirt. I am uh, Don Armstrong. So glad that you could join us today. Hi. What? You're going to turn? Okay. Hi, Candace. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, is Candace there? She just tuned in. Hi, Candace. Uh, so good to have you. Uh, Candace is battling cancer up in Kansas City, and we wish her the best. Godspeed. And um, she's always been a fan of this show, and we appreciate you joining us at our new time. So uh, thank you for that. Do we have Mac yet? He's, yeah, he yeah. was backlit. He's getting situated a little bit better. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, we couldn't hardly see him. Well, oh, I see. I see. Okay. Well, um, we, here he is. He's just uh, yeah, yeah. sad he, to join us. He's better. Oh. Is I'm he, back. Are you back there? Hi, Mac Delop. Look at that beard, you, brother. You didn't tell me this was going to be on video. I thought this, wait a minute now. <laughs> You're a whole lot better looking on radio. Listen, we sure would appreciate it if you'd put your pants on, if, if that's okay. <laughs> I won't tell you what I am wearing. No. <laughs> I'm wearing a bathing suit, actually. <laughs> Are you really? That's perfect. No, I I, hey, Mac, uh, Mac. So Mac is the uh, managing partner out there at uh, John Eagle Honda, and we sure appreciate you joining us. It's always good to see you, my friend. Thank you so much. And uh, we wanted to talk to you today. I know that you carry your full line of Honda cars, but you also carry, you have a used car lot on and a pre-owned lot there at John Eagle Honda. That's right. Yeah. Sure do. So I wanted to talk to you today. How is business overall in general uh, with the coronavirus and everything? Uh, you know, I know that car dealerships around the Houston area were hurting. We heard that uh, May was better than April. Is that right? Considerably. Yeah. Uh, we, we really had a solid month. I would compare it every bit to a, uh, to a January and February and actually maybe a little bit better than that. And yes, pre-owned sales. Uh, incredible. But it was solid on both sides. The only issue we're going to have, which I know you're familiar with, is going to be availability in the next few months. Yeah, because uh, all the factories have pretty much shut down. I think that they're coming back now, but obviously there's going to be a lag time before you get those cars. There is. Yeah. The incredible incentives that the manufacturers put out there, uh, Conquest Cash, and and uh, in the case of Honda, and of course, uh, Loyalty Cash, and of course, First Responders, uh Payments, uh, no payments for 90 days, low interest rates. I mean, there's so many things being offered out there by all the manufacturers, and it's really, really increased business. It was, uh, it, it was, a, it was a super May, and I'm expecting the same in June and July. So let's turn to certified used and regular used cars, and uh, let's talk about that. Do you get most of your certified used cars uh, out of the returns off lease cars? Is that how that Great. works? Three, three different ways, Don. We, we, of course, buy them at the Honda auction, which are typically lease turning cars. They're low mileage. They're, we, we bring them in. We certify them. So that's our that's our first source. Of course, trading cars yep. that we certify. Uh, we can go back as, as far as six years and certify a, a, a Honda. And uh, let's see. They're, they're, yeah. And, and then and, um, just outright purchasing. Uh, so trades, auctions, outright purchasing, we're always looking to, to purchase Hondas. So there's uh, there, there's a lot of different sources to get our get our certified Hondas. So, I know, so in other words, I could bring my 79 Impala four-door up there, and, and you'd say, yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll certify it and uh, buy it myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, that would be that would be an awesome car. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it wouldn't be. Yeah, somebody somebody surely would snap that right up, except for those huge rust holes in the back fenders. <laughs> well, okay. yeah. I, I wouldn't expect you to own anything like that. I know better. So but, we we've been focusing on used and new cars today, and and how much of your business there at the dealership is used and certified pre-owned? Uh, compared to selling new, is it significant? In in, uh, in in past years, it's been about thirty to forty percent of our sales. Oh my! Today. 
today it's about 50 to 60 percent holy cow i had no clue i was waiting for you to say about 20 percent at one point when the virus first started march and april we were running neck and neck it was literally literally as many on, uh, used as there was uh, brand new so if we had 100 new out we had 100 used out it was just it was remarkable how the how the used and and most of our deliveries in march and april uh don were uh, in home, about 50, 60%, we actually took out to the, to the home and delivered. We would open up, uh, our finance manager would open up a Zoom meeting like this, sit down with the customer as if he was right there. And it's, it's changing the way we do business. Unquestionably, it's changing the way we do business. This is, this is a, this was, although it's a horrible thing, the pandemic was horrible. It has taught us a lot about the auto industry and what customers truly want. So do you think some of this change is going to be beneficial going into the future because of the uh, you can deliver and, and take care of a customer in the comfort of their own home? No doubt about it. No, no doubt about it. I don't know what percentage yet. We really don't have a feel for that. Everybody loves to feel, touch the cars, uh, compare the cars. There's still going to be a lot of that. But, you know, a Honda owner is a Honda owner, typically. I mean, it, 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 I, I can't tell you exactly the percentages, of, of uh, but, but it's really high. Loyalty factor is so high. So they already know they want a Honda Accord. They already know they want a Honda Pilot, a CRV, an HRV. They're pretty sure what, what model they want. And so it, it's a matter of picking out the features that they want. Well, and one, and one of the things is everybody has a pretty high expectations of a Honda, and when you bring the vehicle to them, you deliver that because the cars are extremely consistency in quality to deliver what the customer expects. They are. They keep getting better year after year. There, Mac, no- Mac what, is the, what is the number one car that you sell there at your dealership? Let's just take the last year. What's, what's the it, highest selling car? It, it's going to be our SUV line. That's taken over about sixty percent of our. Of really? Our line. If I had to, if I had to pick, it's very close when it comes to the pilot and CRV. But the CRV would be our would be our top seller. Yeah, I've it, got a neighbor that just she's on her second pilot, and it was delivered to her house, uh, I guess last week. And I mean, she thought it was great that they were coming to her instead of. I mean, but you know, she's on her third Honda, so she knew what she wanted, and yeah. she just kind of spec'd it out. And, you know, this is what I want, and they said, well, "We'll bring it to you." And she said, "Great, I'll take it," and she did. And you, you would actually think it would be the younger generation taking advantage of that. And that's because of obviously everything speed and convenience and everything is so important to that consumer, but it's actually uh, skewing a lot older than that. People, they just, they want the convenience. They already know what they want. So it's uh, it, it, it's a fairly simple transaction. And, and the fact that we can offer all of our finance products, if they want a, a vehicle service contract, if they, if they want credit life accident and health or warranty, we don't force any of those on anybody, but we want to show them what a great opportunity is. I prefer a fully protected contract myself, cap insurance, everything. I recommend a vehicle service contract on everybody uh, because they are much less expensive on cars that are very, very high quality with low repair maintenance and low failure rate. So it's, uh, it, you, can, you can afford to fully protect your car up to 100,000 miles, and then there's no surprises. Yeah, there's a peace of mind that you, that you can get with – fully packaging all of the uh, uh, protections available. Mac, yeah. let me ask you, what what is the average mileage of a used vehicle, uh, whether it be pre-owned or just a used car sitting on your lot? I mean, do you have high mileage vehicles there, or are, are they like under 50,000 miles? What do you normally keep on a used car well, lot I mean, these days? We, we love twenty to 60,000 miles. That's what we love in a Honda, but I'm not afraid of a Honda at 125,000 miles. Wow. You all remember my story with the 2000 model uh, Honda Accord that I traded in 2010 with 750,000. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it was original engine. It was original clutch. It was a five-speed manual transmission. Those cars, the cars will last, if you take care of them, uh, in all likelihood, they're, they'll keep on running. They just, we well, don't want to win it. We don't want to win it or quit. Exactly. When we lived in San Antonio, 2004, or something like that, we bought a new Honda specifically, just like you said, we could get all the protection packages. We were going from San Antonio over here to the Beaumont area every weekend. And when the hurricane started, we were helping family and everything. We were putting 25,000 miles a year on it, but I wanted a vehicle I was not going to have to worry about. I could get in it, the wife could get in it, and we could hit the freeway, and we could go every weekend as long as we did our maintenance. Yep. But, you know, it, we just we didn't worry about it. And at 210,000 miles, I gave it to a granddaughter. 
You know, I, I, w- I would like to think back, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that there, that loyalty factor is huge. Uh, back in our day, you were either a Ford, a Chevy, or a Dodge guy. And then today, it's you're either a Toyota person or you're a Honda person. And it still is that way. I mean, once you get into something and you have, have success with that vehicle, yeah. you yeah. own it for five years, you're going to want to go out and buy another one. That's right. And, and you know, you're, we're seeing a lot more loyalty across the brands compared to what we did years ago. Uh, 36 years ago, 1984, when I started with Johnny Gohanda, uh, it was a very loyal owner to the Honda brand, but you still had your Chevy guy. You had your Ford guy. You had your Cadillac guy. You had, my dad was a perfect example of that. He was a Chevy guy and a Cadillac guy. My mom drove the Cadillac. My dad drove the Chevy. And, uh, but, but it, it changed over, uh, Oh, the, the loyalty started falling off when the quality of the vehicles went down significantly. There was such a huge gap between Honda and Toyota and Nissan and and uh, all the all the quality vehicles that uh, that, that the imports uh, or they're not imports anymore, but uh, the, the the import companies. And so it, it kind of it, it went away for a while because of the quality. Now I think all that's back. There's no one, guys. There's no one building a bad car out there. Yeah. There are there are companies building better cars. But there's right, no one right. building a bad car. It's, yeah. just not, it's just not the case. A lot of that loyalty changed through the <laughs> late 70s, 80s, and 90s was somewhat self-inflicted by the poor quality that was being yeah, but delivered but you're by right. some there's, of the manufacturers. There's no more Yugo sitting out there. No, there's not. I think, remember the K car. Remember the Chrysler. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, yeah, we yeah. do. That, that probably turned more people away from the Chrysler brand than and the Dodge brand than, than anything in this world. Everybody went, oh, my gosh. And the door handles were falling off. And, I mean, it was just <laughs> it was, it was bad. something else. Yeah, yeah, but it, it was a different time. And and speaking of a different time, and I, I know that it's going to be a, t- a tough question for you to answer, and you might not even be able to answer it, but uh, – because we're in unprecedented times with the coronavirus. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. Uh, and I know that none of us here have either, and uh, as well as you, Mac. But what do you foresee? I know that you're in touch with all of the car dealers in town. What do you foresee with car dealerships, uh, certified, pre-owned, used? What do you see? Is there going to be a change? Do you see some sort of direction uh, that we're not able to see? The virtual dealership is going to be something we'll see. There is no question. We will see a virtual dealership. We'll see a lot smaller dealerships than what we've seen in the past. So the right foot, now, the seeing, actual footprint is going to be much smaller for the dealership. Much smaller. Much smaller. I see cataloging cars, uh, putting them in vending, like the Carvana product, only the difference is, is, is that's how they'll be. You can build a dealership today on five acres uh, on what we're currently doing on 20 to 25 acres. And that's with the the methods that they have of storing these vehicles, just like the Carvana product. It's a, a, a company out of, uh, it was Italy. It was Italy because Ferrari used it one of the first times to store their cars in a, in a cataloging system like that. You'll, you'll literally walk up to a screen, you'll type in the stock number, the stock number will be delivered to the showroom floor. It'll be in, a, in an environment that keeps the car clean. You wash it one time, you put it in that system. Uh, that's really the direction that I see it going. Not, not that the Carvana, uh, way of selling, it's more of a the it, storage. It is, it, it is, but it's unique. It's the way it looks, uh, for, for pre-owned vehicles. I see that happening. Imagine being able to store on less than an acre, being able to store about five to 600 vehicles and you can go up from there. There's, there's no capacity. You can keep going. Bigger Just as, and bigger. how tall do you want to build it? That is correct. So I really see that happening. You're, you'll have showrooms. You'll have specific models on showrooms. You'll have test drives, but it'll be, it will be delivered straight to the showroom, and you'll be driving like out. A, I think uh, I truly think the the dealerships of tomorrow are less than five acres. So it'd be kind of like a big climate controlled parking garage. That's right. That that that's that's right. valet service. You know, where they go up and they get it and they bring it down to you. Yeah, I, I, I believe mean, that. I can, I can see that. Yeah, and and do you see? I'm going to go over to the service side of the world here. Do you see more of a concierge level pickup and delivery on the service side uh, in the future as yeah. well? And we're already doing that. Yeah, that's, I knew yeah. that. That's kind of why I asked. Yeah, absolutely, already doing that. Picking up cars, VIP service. Right now, that's incredibly important. And service really and truly is is just now really coming back. Auto sales came back. 
service is starting to increase there. Of course, the summer months are coming on. I believe people are going to be uh, doing some traveling, so they're getting their car in for service. We've seen a big uptick in the service side, but, but we saw the uptick in used and new cars first. Uh, and so, I, I, I yes, to answer your question, absolutely, it's going to be it's going to be easier, guys. The way the way vehicles right now, are, I mean, you don't need a major tune up in a car to over a hundred thousand miles. Right, right. So you change your fluids. The electrification coming on the scene. There'll be less. There'll be less and less servicing on electric vehicles. Um, the hybrids, of course, will continue to, to have the service. We're a long way away from that. But but uh, that's a that's a side that's going to be less and less as we as we go more towards electric. electric well, Mac, you always tend to uh, give us some information that we haven't even thought of, and and obviously, <clears throat> it seems as though that the virtual dealership is uh, not too far away, or at least a different looking dealership than all of us are familiar with. I know that it's transitioned over the years, you know, big Taj Mahals to display cars, oh, yeah. but I think that those days are numbered. Like you said, uh, you won't need all of that anymore, and it, it's going to be an interesting time for all of us to witness. Mac, it's great to talk to you, as always, and thank you so much for taking time out of your Saturday, my friend. Yeah. How's Castaway Rods doing? You know what? They're doing really, really well with, uh, with with people fishing as much as they are. We've, uh, you know, one of the one of the few companies out there that uh, that really have flourished during these tough times. Pretty much December, we knew it was going to be a very solid year, but when the pandemic hit, we were concerned, like everyone. Sure. And uh, it, but the sales have come in. The big box stores, Academies, and the Bass Pro and Cabela's, and every. There, we, we, we were shut off for maybe three or four weeks when they tried to figure out what was going to happen, and then they immediately came back with major orders. So yeah, figured out how to do the curb service well. and everything. Yeah, that's great. Yes. Thanks for coming on today, Mac. Thank really you appreciate all very much. it. I enjoyed it. You bet. Thank Take you. Care, yep. Mac Delop, uh, the managing partner out there at John Eagle Honda. Uh, go see him. Great guy. And uh, 290 in Eldridge. Yeah, and he's there almost all the time. Yep. Hey, uh, the In Wheel Time Car Show live streams on Facebook.com slash In Wheel Time, on YouTube, and our website, InWheelTime.com. Podcasts, by the way, are available on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcast, Google Podcast, and Podcast Addict. A quick break now, and then Mr. Mars reviews the 2020 Toyota Tundra. Man, I love my kids so much. I once sat for three hours in the cold rain to watch her soccer team lose by 18 goals. I love my kids so much, I once used a tube to suck snot out of her stuffed nose at 3 a.m. You win. Love your kids? Love them enough to make sure they're in the right car seat. From toddlers to tweens, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to find the right seat for their age and size. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. A social distancing tip. While the CDC urges you to avoid close contact, like hugging or shaking hands, there are other non-physical ways to say hello. Wave, wink, use sign language, salute, smile, give the peace sign, throw up an air high five, do jazz hands. Remember, stay a minimum of six feet or two arms length away from others and stay home if you can. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. You know, I had all the intention in the world this week of being able to change out some of the music. I've, I've got some music selected. I've had it selected for quite some time because uh, it's been a while since I've changed it out. I've got some new PSAs. I, I, I've got it all lined up. And something always comes up during the week, kind of like you, Mars. Yeah. I, you know, you've taught me badly. And so oh, I'm going to use everything else as the excuse as to why I have been neglectful in my music selections but it's please good i like the doors so we're good please the door that's yeah right, kind yeah. of like the doors yeah live band, live band. As, by the way <laughs> speaking of live band uh mr zekin our uh video and sales director over there and music director and music well don't go that yeah, far no not that but he's going to have a uh, big uh, concert tonight <laughs> down in Galveston. You, Mars doesn't know, but we're serious. What, what's the name? Where of is the, it at, Jeffrey? It's at the marina. That, at the, the marina. marina. The marina grill at the in yacht the, basin. In the yacht basin. So do you play yacht rock music? Well, we're going to be uh, below deck. 
They're going to be below deck, oh, playing okay. below deck. All right. We, yeah, uh, we, we got all of that. But um, shot there. <laughs> Time now for this hour's car review, and Mr. Mars had an opportunity to drive the Toyota Tundra. Yes, I did. Now, I, I want to say that when we were in San Antonio, I had a need for a truck. Mine was in the shop, so I went down and rented one of these. My wife fell in love with it. Now, this is back in 2005, so... They were a little bit different then. They've come a long way since then, but she still Wait, is in love with the Tundra. And this is uh, 2000, only 15, 15 years. years ago. Yeah. But, I mean, she still, every time, oh, I'm getting a Tundra next week, she wants in it. She wants to go for that ride. And what we had was the 1794 edition. Now, this is a Crew Max 4x4. Full size 4x4. It has a 5.5, 5.5-foot uh, bed on it. It's got a wide mouth grill up front that's unique to the 1794. It's a little different than the other ones. And another thing it's got is a three-piece bumper system. A couple of the other OEMs have got that. So if you ding a corner or something, you don't have to replace the whole thing. You can replace the pieces of it across the front, which is pretty cool. And it's got the LED headlights, fog lights, daytime running lights. We had the moon roof. Uh, we had the TRD off-road package, which gave us some... Bilstein shocks, skid plates, had tow hooks up front that kind of fit in with the off-road look. The 20-inch six-spoke wheels are standard on the 1794, but we had the optional 18-inch five-spoke alloy wheels. So they were a little bit smaller, and, and I really liked it a little bit better because I think it helped ride. Oh, really? It had a little, okay. more, a little more sidewall on the tires and stuff than those big 20s, and uh, yeah. I just... I kind of like the ride on that. But anyway, so you get into the inside of it. We had leather, of course, and uh, it's all kind of up into that Western theme with that 1794. And if you're not familiar with it, that name comes from the, the, the ranch, that the land that Toyota bought to build the factory on outside of San Antonio. So there's some historical significance there that they're really trying to pay tribute to. We had the uh, front bucket seats that were heated. They were ventilated. You can get a bench seat in certain models, but, of course, not in the 1794 because it's too nice. And uh, the back seat, the rear seat, is a 60-40 fold-up rear seat. So you can put a little bit of cargo back there. We had the 8-inch touchscreen there in the dash that handles the nav, the convenience controls, a really nice JBL 12-speaker audio system with a subwoofer and an amp. That <laughs> jamming to the Jimmy Buffett? Yeah, I'm telling you, it'll jam to anything you want. Now, up under the hood is a 5.7-liter V8, and that's a standard engine, 381 horsepower, 401 pound-feet of torque backed by a six-speed automatic. Now, this combination allows it, it will pull 10,200 pounds. So that's a lot of load that you can pull. In a half ton. In a half ton. Now, that's always been kind of the drawback about the Tundra is the fuel economy. She's thirsty. The EPA says you should be looking for about 13 on the city, 17 out on the highway, combined 14. I got about 13 average for the week I had it. Did I not understand that uh, Toyota has uh, got a new engine coming? Uh, twin turbo V6 is what I've heard is in the works. They've now, got a couple of things in the works. I don't this, know if it's been announced Some yet. of them have already gone to the V6, a turbo V6, but this is a really pure V8. So mm -hmm. if you want a V8 mm -hmm. yeah, and you're willing to pay for it to tow, this is one you need <laughs> to look at. Pay for it in fuel economy, too. That's right. Yeah. I mean, but it's got awesome power. The transmission does its search. That six-speed works really good behind that V8. It's got a 430 gear in the rear end of it, though. Oh, that's how they. That's how it tows. Exactly. Is, that's is also how it, it. It, it gets 13 miles to the gallon. Yeah, but that's, you know, you understand that because that's why you bought that truck. That's right. You know, you're not going to buy this truck because you're going to be driving every day to San Antonio no, this is from not, here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's not what you're looking for. And, and it does have a, a firm truck ride, but it's not overly harsh or anything. If you're looking for something to compare it to, then you're going to be able to look at the Ram 1500. It's going to start at about 32 to get the four-door crew cab type. The Ford F-150 starts at 35, 285 in the same configuration. Get into the GMC twins. The 1500 GMC Sierra is a 35, 900 starting point. Mm -hmm. Now, you can get a base Toyota Tundra, $33,575 for a truck. Now, the base test vehicle we had, of course, 1794, like you say, top of the line, 51675 And with a couple of the options, such as the uh, moonroof and a few other things, MSRP as tested is $57,222. And that's right in the market, though. And, and try and go buy a used one. Yeah. See if you can find one out on the used market. People that own these trucks, keep them. They like them, just like my wife likes it. So there's a lot to be said for loyalty that we've been talking about. So if you're looking... At the half tons, 
There's another one to look at. Thank you, sir. It's In Wheel Time, America's most popular car talk show. We are all things automotive. 911, what's your emergency? God, there's a train that just hit a car. Sir, what is your location? Uh, uh, look around for a street sign, sir. It's 8th and Orchard. 8th and Orchard. Okay, very good. 8th and Orchard. Sir, help is on the way. Why would he do that? What? The train still doesn't stop. You have to get there now. At a railway crossing, even if the engineer sees you and hits the brakes, it can take a mile for the train to stop. And for you, that's too late. Stop. Trains can't. Paid for by NHTSA. Yeah, baby. It's in wheel time. Thanks so much for joining us on this. By the way, if you're just joining us, our live broadcast is Saturdays now from 10 a.m. to noon on Facebook, YouTube, and inwheeltime.com. So, so get up and get out of bed a little bit earlier. Saturday morning with in wheel time. Who's, who's still in bed at 10 o'clock in the morning? Not old people, that's for sure. Yeah, dead. Uh, at any rate, it's time now for uh, This Week in Auto History, and Conrad has that for us. So this week in 1864, oh. Ransom Eli Oles was born. Of course. <laughs> i got to throw my Oldsmobile thing in there. In uh, Geneva, Ohio. In 1896, on um, this week, was the first time uh, Henry Ford drove the quadricycle, his first foray into the automotive industry. In 1921, Mac developed their symbol for the hood of their vehicle. And what was it? Bulldog. A bulldog. So that, in 21, was the first time they actually put the bulldog on the vehicle. I would do really good on match game, but go ahead. In 1925, <laughs> Maxwell Motor Company became, uh, excuse me, reorganized into the Chrysler Corporation. Maxwell. I did not know that. Neither did I. I, I thought that was pretty interesting. And then in 1933 this week uh, was... When the very first drive-in theater opened, and that was in... Uh, With Al Capone standing out front. <laughs> uh, the Crescent Boulevard Theater in Camden, New Jersey. So, drive-in theater. wonder what's been, there now. I'll, be, I'll, I'll go look it up and see, and maybe next week we'll, we'll talk about it. In 1934, on this day, uh, the automobile manufacturer licensed the name Nissan Motor Company in Japan in 1934. In 1951, Gordon Burring, the designer of the 1935 Aust uh, Auburn Speedster, he patented a vehicle top configuration called the T-Tops. And then the first production T-Top was a 1968 Corvette. He patented that idea back in 1951 and never saw production until 68. Wow. I, I, I thought that was a pretty cool. That is an interesting fact. But and why not? And then in 1957, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled against DuPont that it had to sell its share interest in General Motors because of what they were calling a monopoly. So, DuPont? Mm -hmm. DuPont used to own a, t a boatload of GM stock. And, uh, and the it, US well, Supreme what did Court DuPont make for automobiles? Paint. Paint. Paint, paint all, all kinds of uh, um, chemical, chemical, chemical components, paint. Like oh, yeah, 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 and yeah, 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 yeah. And Automotive in, paint. And then in 1959, and and I am going to absolutely slaughter this name, but I'm sure uh, Mac Delop can say it correctly. Uh, Kichiharo Kazuwa Tahima. <laughs> <laughs> You're Let me right. See it. You butchered it. Let me well, see well it. but he's the executive vice president of American Honda. Was named here in the United States. And a small storefront office on Pico Boulevard in Los Angeles, California. And then also in 19, the second one from the bottom. And then in 1998, Consumer Reports called for uh, the removal of Suzuki from selling their uh, little Suzuki truck because of a tip over. Kihachiro. Is that the samurai? Kawashima. I, I got nowhere near that. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> not even close. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But, you know, I, I always thought it was interesting that American Honda was founded in this. If you go look it up, um, this little, bit of, little, bitty, little bitty building in, uh, in the suburbs of L.A. Okay. You want to do the events calendar in 30 seconds? And the events calendar is uh, 
Bayou City Cup car show is uh, next Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that's going to be at Freddy's Steak Burger in Katy. And then also on the 13th is going to be the Texas Autobahn uh, Forest Cruise into the forest, uh, which will be a lot of fun. And that's going to depart at 8.30 a.m. Uh, and, uh, and then on the 20th is going to be the Father's Day weekend show at the Chambers Town Center. And that's the southeast corner uh, in Baytown All of right. I-10 and 146. Thank you, sir. If you're a member of a car, truck, or Jeep club, you can put your group in our in-wheel-time Car Club Spotlight, just email us the club's info and a contact name and number, and we'll take it from there. The email address is info at inwheeltime.com. We're back after a quick break. 